Hi, Carl. I hope everything is well with you. I truly miss your podcast. I am going over and over them constantly. Like I said, I hope all is well with you. Miss you, Vicky. Hi, Carl. I miss your podcasts. You have produced the best art interview podcasts, and you need to get back into the game. I've been listening to the entire series for the second time. Please know that I've recommended your podcasts to every artist I know. They are that good. Scott. Hello, Carl. Your podcast was one of my favorites because I loved your interview style and the calm, friendly approach of your conversation. I really miss that. Will you be returning to the Artful Painter podcast? Julie. Hi, Carl. I remember you said that you were moving to the West. I hope you are okay and enjoying lots of new things. I miss your wonderful show and wondered if you will bring it back or not. Hope all is good. Jean. This is probably one of the hardest videos for me to make. I never intended to be gone this long from podcasting. The last episode of The Artful Painter featuring Cami Menlik was episode number 72, and that was published on July 12, 2022. Now, I genuinely thought I would be back recording new episodes in just a few months. It was only to be a hiatus of just two or three months at most. Well, a few months dragged on to what would turn out to be nearly a year and a half. Now, after a year and a half, I decided it's time to get back into podcasting. To that end, several times, I've tried to record what should have been episode number 73. It's been frustrating. Each time I sat down to record, I ended up scrapping everything. After hours and hours of work, it just wasn't happening. To make things worse, I kept telling folks who asked whether or not the podcast would be back that it would. And I definitely did not want to disappoint anyone. Well, last night, I just didn't sleep. I turned this over and over in my head. What was wrong? Why could I not deliver on producing this podcast? And I realized that my heart was divided and torn. Do I resume production of The Artful Painter or not? Producing a podcast, especially one that values quality, is extremely difficult and it's time consuming. And frankly, I don't have it in me to spend that much time anymore producing this show. With the mountains beckoning out my window here in Colorado, what I really want to do is get outside, explore the beautiful Colorado landscape we now live in, and paint. I don't have time to do both well. So this morning, after three cups of coffee and a lot of deep thought, I came to the realization that I can't do the Artful Painter podcast anymore. That's the reality. Just the thought of doing it was causing a great deal of stress for me. So, Despite the wonderful encouragement from everyone, I have to make a decision that is right for me and honest for you. I don't want to keep leading you on. I am truly sorry. I really am. But the Artful Painter podcast is no more. I do feel that I owe you a deeper explanation of why I've reached this point. There was a lot that led up to that long hiatus of a year and a half. If you want to listen to that, I invite you to hear my story. At the beginning of 2022, both Shirley, that's my wife, 
and I were exhausted from the isolation and anxiety caused by the pandemic. Things were beginning to open up, but uh, we felt we needed a drastic change in our life. We both wanted to move to Colorado. It was now or never. It's a beautiful state that we have visited many times. Uh, our daughter lives there, so we wanted to move near her. Uh, she's lived there for several years, and so every time we would visit, we just fell in love with Colorado all over again each time we visited. In March 2022, we traveled to Montrose and we rented an Airbnb for about a month. And during that time, we began seriously searching for a home. Now, there were a few things we wanted in a home. We One, we wanted to live in the heart of the town where there are many sidewalks and parks all within walking distance. That was important to Shirley and I. The second thing is I wanted to be able to gut and remodel an old home completely. This had been a lifelong dream of mine to be able to tear something down and rebuild it. Would I be able to do it? It's not that I had experience doing it, but I just wanted the challenge. Could I do it? And the third thing that we wanted, or at least I wanted, was a standalone garage or shed that could be converted into an art studio. Now that's a tall order in a small town. And especially with the real estate market exploding at that time and interest rates rising, finding something suitable for us would be a difficult task. Surprisingly, our realtor found an old farmhouse that was suddenly drastically reduced in price. Hmm, it definitely needed a lot of work, but it checked all the boxes for us. It was in the old downtown area of Montrose. It was ripe for a complete remodel, and it had a large 40 foot by 30 foot standalone garage that was in excellent shape and would be perfect for a studio. And a big bonus, it was just a few blocks away from our daughter. I consulted with my skilled construction friends, also an experienced home inspector, and after doing all of that, my wife and I decided it was all systems go. We put in an offer on the house, the offer was accepted, and we closed on May 27, 2022. Now it was time to get to work. We were ready to begin demolition work. This began about the first week of August 2022. By mid-September, we were ready to start rebuilding. It was exciting. But then we received devastating news. Shirley's older sister was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and it had spread to other organs within her body. The prognosis was grim. Suddenly, the house remodel in Colorado just wasn't important anymore. Shirley's sister Jane was like a mother to Shirley. If it weren't for Jane, I would not have met Shirley. We owed so much to this remarkable woman. Her love, positivity, and hospitality endeared us to her. The whole neighborhood where she lived in Georgia, they adored her. Now, I realize this is not a story that is unique to us. Sadly, many families have been devastated by the murderous ravages of cancer, and now it was hitting close to home for us. So our priorities of necessity quickly changed. Shirley would now spend most of her time with her sister, providing her with the care that she needed. Over the next several months, Shirley would spend nearly six months with her sister in Georgia while I remained in Colorado, continuing the remodeling work the best that, the, that I could do. From time to time, Shirley would return to Colorado, and for a few short weeks uh, when her sister was stable, she would work with me, and that's when things would speed up. Uh, I only worked fast when my wife was here. <laughs> I sure missed her a lot, but anyway, uh, she was um, she was such a good partner and she is a good partner to work with. But still, her sister took priority. And we both knew that, accepted that, and understood that. The remodel compared to her sister, no, it, it just wasn't that important. 
Though I intended to do most of the work myself, that was my dream. The, the changed circumstances made this impossible. I would have to have help. Fortunately, we quickly made many friends in Colorado who rallied behind us. So we had friends who helped with the electrical work, uh, the plumbing work, both the rough in and the finish, the drywall, framing, heating and air, and so many other things that are too numerous to, to mention, and I won't bore you with those details. These dear friends were invaluable, their generosity priceless. During this remodel project, I learned to expect the unexpected and that you must make compromises along the way. There's just no way around it. With Shirley gone for much of the project, admittedly, my progress was slow. Every morning, I started work as soon as there was light and I worked until sunset. And eventually, it began to feel like a real home again. In March 2023, I flew back to Georgia to visit Shirley, her sister, and her family again. And we also started at that time to pack. We packed up as much of our items as possible so that they would be ready to move when that time came. And during that visit to Georgia, I managed to squeeze in some much needed mental medicine. <laughs> I visited the Booth Museum in Cartersville, Georgia. That was a much needed diversion. It was so good to be immersed in such beautiful and inspiring art again. And while I was there, I made a special effort to return to see one of my favorite paintings in the booth. The title of that painting is Searching for the Newborn and it's by artist James Reynolds. The label for that painting is most apt. It says, James Reynolds is often called an artist artist. His application of color and loose impressionistic style are much admired by his peers. This painting shows two cowboys braving the cold weather in attempts to find a young calf hiding in the brush. Now I'm no cowboy by any stretch of the imagination. But this remodel project in Colorado during one of the worst winters in a decade, according to the locals, well, that gave me a taste of what Reynolds Cowboys were experiencing in the brutal, bitter cold searching for that young calf. Well, back to our story. We returned to Colorado and resumed work on the house together. However, that was short-lived. Uh, Shirley's sister, uh, her condition began to worsen again. And so we were both back on a flight to Georgia. And I think that was around the first end of May, maybe the first of June. I can't remember exactly, but it was about that time. Now, back in Georgia, while Shirley assisted her sister, I worked on preparing to sell our house in Georgia. And it was also time to get everything ready to move. I ordered a tractor trailer uh, to load up ourselves. And then on June 19, 2023, after being loaded up with the help of my children, uh, my daughters-in-laws, and many of my friends that are in Georgia, that trailer with all our possessions on it was on its way to Colorado. It would take about a week for it to arrive there. I felt a mixture of excitement and sadness as that trailer pulled out of the driveway in Georgia. We had built 40 years of memories in that house. Our children were born and raised there. And now that chapter had finally closed. Sadly, another chapter was about to close for my dear wife and her sister. I visited Shirley's sister, Jane, one last time and then flew back to Colorado to be there when the moving truck arrived. The finality of our move to Colorado sunk in 
when I saw that moving trailer dropped off in our driveway in Colorado. So several of my Colorado friends came by and they helped me unload it. And yes, after unloading 50 something boxes of books, I think most of them are still my friends. I hope so anyway. <laughs> well, as I was wrapping up the move in, Shirley and her sister Jane, uh, the one with cancer, she called me uh, with FaceTime. Uh, that was on Monday, June 26, 2023. Jane wanted to see our roses in full bloom in our front yard. She had always hoped to visit us here in Colorado, but you know, her health was just so bad that it just wasn't possible now. So I turned my FaceTime camera to the roses and, and showed her each bush and spoke to her uh, briefly at that time. But it would be the last time I would ever talk to her. On Wednesday afternoon, my wife called me and I dreaded to hear because I could just tell in her voice that something was, was bad. She told me that her sister was in distress. Later that evening, Shirley called me one more time and she tearfully told me that Jane had died. She was 76 years old. The next couple of weeks were a blur. I flew back to Georgia as soon as I could get a flight. After the memorial service, Shirley and I had a few remaining things to load up in a small U-Haul trailer. So we loaded that up, hitched it up to my SUV, and by July 19, 2023, we were home in Colorado for good. So it's kind of bittersweet, isn't it? <laughs> You know, it was something we looked so much to. But we're okay now. Just a little postscript. <laughs> August 17, 2023. Uh, the final inspection was completed. Everything was clear. And then November 27, 2023, our home in Georgia finally sold and closed. You know, the podcast wasn't the only thing that was put on hold. Uh, I didn't paint. I didn't paint at all. Fine art painting, that is. I did a lot of house painting, but not fine art painting. So didn't get to do that. And that would have been therapeutic if I could have, but it just wasn't possible. It was just too hard. Now, though I'm not podcasting anymore, I am happily back at the easel. You can see a little painting back here on my little easel here up in the loft. Uh, I am I'm glad to be able to do that. Now, not too long ago, uh, after the house was completed and we moved in, all our children and their families came out to visit us a few weeks ago. That was a really nice, uh, nice time. It was nice having them visit and stay in our cozy home. Now, my oldest granddaughter uh, and I, we reconnected with our love of painting. She loves to paint. She is now 13 years old. Uh, she, when we traveled out to Moab while they were here, she took several pictures. She loves photography, but she took a picture of a scene along the Colorado River heading towards Moab. And she told me then, she says, I want to paint this. I said, OK, we're going to do it. So a few days later, we were in my house. We we're up here in the loft using this uh, painting easel here. She painted that scene. And she did a great job. She's at that point where she's teachable. She understands what's being said and she can put it into practice. And I really uh, enjoy seeing that in her. So I thought she did a really nice job for her age. And you know what? She was happy with her painting too. She was proud of it. I would really like to see more young people like River get interested in oil painting. I think they would really enjoy that more than being totally immersed in iPads all the time. So throughout this remodeling project, I just want to express my gratitude for all those that emailed me and, and asked me about the podcast. I'm sorry I'm not doing it, but, but I do appreciate the encouragement. Just as a parting gift 
to you all, even though I'm not doing the podcast. Remember, I do have the uh, ebooks, not ebooks. I have the, well, they are ebooks. If you go to my website, you can see the text to, to these books. One is The Art Spirit by Robert Henry, but also I have the audio. So that's about nine hours. I did uh, Landscape Painting by Burge Harrison. That one runs about four and a half hours, but all the text is including on my, included on my website. And I hope in the future to add more, but I'm not going to make any more promises about anything. But anyway, those those uh, audiobooks are free. They're available on YouTube. They're organized on my website. If you want to do that, they're completely free. You can listen to them on YouTube or on my website. Well, this isn't the show that I wanted to do. And I've been working on it for a few weeks now. And I just couldn't make it happen. So I hope you all understand how difficult a decision this has been. Though I won't be doing a podcast, it doesn't mean I'm going away. I will continue to post videos from time to time on YouTube, and I'll share my painting adventures with you, both on my website, on YouTube, and social media. So I'm not going away. I'm just having to simplify a bit, and I think you can understand that, and I appreciate it. Thank you for all your support throughout the few short years I did this show. And thank you to the artists that were guests on those shows. I, you all were amazing. So thank you. Your kindness, support, and generosity will never be forgotten. My name is Carl Olson, and this has been The Artful Painter. 